and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Ram Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. The hills are alive with the sound of shipping. Yes, yes, yes. You, you can hear it all the way from Canterlot to Los Pegasus. Yes, unless you're in Ponyville, then there's something wrong. Then you're probably under attack by something. We apologize yes. for the inconvenience. Also joining us is Jacob. Hello, and now I have to de- have to deal with uh, another bird brain around here again. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I-, I noticed we have two quote-unquote griffins on the podcast today. No, yes. no, correction. Uh, I'm oh. a griffin. He's a ah, hippogriff. Yes, griffin and hippogriffs, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Although they're both bird-themed. Yeah. True, true. Huh, why did I go for griffin? Yeah. Uh, Oh, I guess uh, whatever it is. Like, nah, I wanted to be normal, so that's why I had an earth pony. Now, how how do you hold stuff with? How do you type with hooves? <laughs> One of the uh, great mysteries of our day. Yes, yes, yes. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue ninety four, um, quote unquote season ten episode six. Uh. In this, sorry, um, we all we are also going to review issue forty nine, um, also episode seven. So yes, in this, uh, where is this text? In this issue, the first festival of the two sisters, Saint Celestia and Luna's retirement, take place, and Princess Twilight Sparkle calls on Pinkie Pie and Cheese Sandwich to help with the party planning. Yes, this is fun. Yay! So first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, reading this, I'd consider it the safest approach of the Season 10 comics. Uh, we know from the uh, the last problem that Pinky and Cheese are undoubtedly married with Kid. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't see any other way you could interpret that final scene. That is true. So... Uh, Showing how that relationship started, where where she started to move from friendship to something more intimate, we have this story. And it's a pretty fun one. I enjoy seeing the dynamic evolve and seeing how these two party planners play off each other, where, whereas in the past we've only seen negativity, or well, not negativity, uh, but confrontation or con- uh, competition, followed mm. by cheese being out of laughter. So mm, this true. is a welcome welcome chance to see a further development. That's true, that's true. And uh, the the way that... <laughs> I, I feel like Cadence is rubbing off on Twilight somehow. Because she's, uh, she's working on the shipping? Yes. <laughs> like, you can clearly tell that, oh, uh, Pinky really wants uh, cheese. Like, she has cheese on the brain. So let let me try and help her with that. (laughs) Yes, allow me. (laughs) Yes. Also, uh, Jacob, what do you think? Where to start? Um, Tom Zellner is one of those writers that are sort of in the mix for me. Uh, I I don't know how to put it. Like, there are some things he does okay, but then there are some things that he just doesn't do very well. Like... One of, the, one of the things that uh, rubbed me the wrong uh, way was when he did the run on the Friends Forever for Fluttershy and Zecora, where it was basically just Fluttershy in Discord uh, chapter. Zecora didn't really do anything. Or like the one that's, uh, what is it, um, Ponies of Dark Water, which is really inconsistent and all that. Not in this case, though, because Tom Zellner did write... Uh, the Friends Forever for Pinkie Pie and Cheese Sandwich in the past. So this, uh, I think he's the best writer to do for this because it's basically just a continuation of what he did before. Hmm. I didn't remember that, but ah, glad you brought it up. So he does have history with uh, Pinkie Pie and Cheese. So that's good. That is great. So anyway, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So let's start the coming off with Twilight Panicking. It's always a good start. Yay! 
So, Twilight panics over the preparation of the Summer Sun celebration, saying that say, just just nitpicking on every little detail, like the ice sculpture. Oh no! Uh, make sure the ice sculpture um, doesn't melt or whatever it is, and also the music and so on. And she panics. She panics and whatnot. And Pinky comes in. Pinky comes in, greets the group, say, hey, how are you? And Twilight uh, shows her her uh, party planning planner. Uh, Pinkie Pie takes a read at it and says that, huh, <clears throat> well, I can't say I would have gone, sorry, uh, I can't say I would have thought of having a group reading in, uh, in. that's interesting. Uh, overall, it's a solid start. And Twilight panics with a solid start because Celestia used to say that when she was going nowhere with her homework. And with that, Pinkie Pie kind of takes over and does her own thing. And while saying all this stuff, uh, she hints that, oh, it would be great to have cheese around, cheese, cheese, cheese. And Twilight kind of picks this up. Uh, picks up on this and just says, Ah, yes, uh, Pinky, would you like to have Cheese help you on this project? It will be great to have two party planners. And Pinky just asks, Can you do that? <laughs> and I just love this flex in Twilight. Of course I can. I'm the princess. <laughs> and with that, we get uh, Cheese, uh, or we get um, the summons from Cheese. So I'm just going to pause here. Uh, Silva, what do you think of the intro? Well, I'm actually a little frustrated by it. Oh, uh, how so? At least in, this, in the writing department, uh, art and said, Twilight in the show, we saw that she, we had uh, a trivial problem where we got to see one final Twilight freakout. Then Summer Sun Celebration, we find that she's gotten over that She's supposed to be a bit more in control, a bit less panicky. So she, then she goes through a crisis of faith uh, when she finds out Discord's been holding their hooves the whole time. But again, she gets her confidence back. So to start this off with her freaking out again and publicly shouting at an artist down in the courtyard seems like a really big step back uh, and really undermines the progress I think she's made in being the ruler. It'd be one thing if she was saying to the artist, those are off model, please do it again. Uh, and then go behind lock room and then freak out. You know, sort of public persona versus inner thoughts. But this, this way, there's no barrier for Twilight. There's nothing to show she's keeping up appearances. Also, I don't know what she's talking about. Those art sculptures look pretty darn good to me. Yes, yes. Now, I, sp I do also love the artist pony. I think that pattern on the legs, clearly an OC, but mm -hmm. I think there's an actual real-life horse that has this sort of pattern on their hooves that resembles... Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't remember. The type of horse? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. I, I know what you mean, but not to this extent where everything is edgy or edged. <clears throat> well, it's but, either way. It, I I love the design of that character. Mm -hmm. Very unique. Now, when Pinky comes in, and you know, it's it's more trust between Twilight and Pinky that she's willing to freak out in front of the party planner. And it's fun to see Pinky getting all go get going. And I do love the princess flex from Twilight at the end. But it took it took some negative moments to get there. Personally, for me, I feel like this is all just a facade. Like, you know how Celestia does her thing and then like, oh, d did I do that on purpose? Oh, no, mm, sure, sure, mm, I'm not sure. I mean, she does it better than Twilight, but Twilight ha has a way, so she does things her way. So it feels like this is all part of the grand plan just to ship. <laughs> Mm, if if that were Twilight's goal from the beginning, but then that would mean really damaging her public image to facilitate but, a ship. Eh, probably, but this is her 
first year as ruler. I'm 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 assuming it's the first year because uh, they say that this is the first year since uh, the last uh, uh, summer sun celebration with the princess. So I'm just assuming that. I I, I agree. I think that's a safe assumption. Hmm. So Jacob, what do you think, man? Oh, I'm kind of leaning on the side of silver over there with the whole twilight figure, but I do have some uh, other issues that are more uh, art-wise because I can see it now uh, with those sculptures of Celeste and Luna. I can see that there's some uh, shading on the background where there's not supposed to be any. Oh, you you mean the art? I mean, we we. Mm, I I can see what you mean. Yes, 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 mm, yes. But I don't know. I I kind of feel like it's forgivable, and I don't think this is the artist. This is the yeah, colorist. I, I only noticed it just now when uh when, when, yeah. when the Silver was talking. Also, yeah. uh, Silver, of course, they're off model. Did you see the size of those statues? They're like really <laughs> small. Oh, they're so- they must be bigger. Than the bigger. Size. How are we supposed to worship the sun and moon? But <laughs> I don't think so. You're supposed to worship the sun and moon. Now, now you're supposed to worship the sparkle. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Down on your hooves and worship the sparkle. Well, she clearly disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <did> it. <clears throat> so anywho, let's move on. So the next day, uh, we see the train arrive from wherever it went. And we see Pinkie Pie there, excitingly hoping for Cheese to arrive. And we see Rainbow Dash! Yay! So <laughs> um, she's a bit disappointed because of how Pinkie uh, greeted her. And... Uh, I like this line from Rainbow. Um, well, that's a fine welcome for the leader of the Wonderbox flying squad for the festival. So she ranked up. Wow. That's good on her. And then uh, we see Pinky greet Applejack. And then Rarity. <laughs> and then Discord. Uh, well, Fluttershy and Discord. And finally, we get to see Cheese. Yay! She's very excited and happy. And she's very strong. Ouch. So with that, they head on to the party planning. Um, looking at the town, uh, what what they can do and how they can prepare. Cheese says, oh, uh, wouldn't it be great if we have uh, cosplayers dressing up as Princess Celestia and Duna handing out candies? Yay! Or... Uh, for Pinky, wouldn't it be great if we can have some kind of uh, t-shirt stand here and maybe some plastic, mm, uh, little plastic figures and so on. And suddenly, oh, whoa, what's this? Um, Pinky and Cheese having a good time together? What's that? That's not normal. And Cheese just brings Pinky back to reality saying maybe they can call it Peps, uh, plastic equine ponies. Yay! I think that's what they call those toys in this real world too. So, the two of them uh, walk around a bit, kind of flirt with each other, and suddenly they discover a hole. Um, The hole is kind of a sinkhole, it just came out of nowhere, and the two decided to go in and explore. Wait, what? (laughs) How? So... They do go in and explore, and they think of ways to party plan in the hole, uh, putting more subwoofers, lights, and so on. And we do see the cutest interaction between the two. Them trying... Like, it's just so cute. It's diabetes. Diabetes cute. And she's being silly as he is, almost stripped and fell, and Pinkie Pie saved him. And this is where, in other fictions, they would kiss, and stuff will happen. But not in the official comics! <laughs> and with that, they head out and um, kind of get back on their way. And I'm going to pause here because I feel like there's a conversation going to happen. Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. When I see a sinkhole, as was present in the last 
BronyCon, my first <laughs> thought is not, hey, let's hold a party down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I, I genuinely don't know why they are thinking this way. But backing it up just a minute, if we're, if Twilight's upset that the ice sculpture's off model, when she sees Cheese's imagination in action with a pink Celestia and a very purple Luna. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, but here's the thing. It is on brand for the toys. It's on brand for the toys, but, the, you know, she's going for accuracy, dang it. Well, Hasbro says it's those colors. <laughs> Hasbro, can, Hasbro can sit and spin for all I care. <laughs> you do not make super pink Celestia. Uh, make very, though, very faintly pink Celestia. Even Yes, that is also true. Even though her color is on the pink side. It's, a, it's There's a hint of pink. But Luna is in the blue category. I mean, I'm not going to vouch on this one, Norman. Blue. Oh, no, I totally agree with you, man. Double D, double die. <laughs> uh... Now, the reunion with Cheese and the greeting with everybody, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. But uh... also, uh, we could say that this romance started with a tussle in Moss. Ah, uh, yes. For, for some couples, it's a hay- hayloft. For some couples, it's a grass field. For these two, it's a subterranean cave with... Uh, that was redundant, subterranean cave. Uh, <laughs> with moss. M- Mommy, Daddy, how did you meet? Oh, we had a tussle in the moss. Oh, I mean, honestly speaking, when they first met when they were trying to do a birthday party for Rainbow Dash and things escalated there. Hmm. Well, when did you two start dating? Our first date was in, in the sinkhole. Uh... <laughs> Man, like, uh, I know we didn't review the Guardians of, uh, the, the Guardians of Friendship? What, what what was the crap that we reviewed? Uh, Jacob, what was it again? You remember? Guardians of Harmony? Yeah, I, I, I know we didn't review that silver because the more I think about it, it was just a toy advertisement. But man, was that disappointing. Like, uh, quick... Quick question and opinion from you. What do you think of that uh, annual, 2017? Well, it was basically a big, big old toy advertisement. I, honestly, it actually gave some development to, of all beings, Princess Amore. <laughs> who, who we've... is sort of in the ether forever now. It's a bit mm. sad. Yeah. She's just gotten to pieces. Also but if so you're talking rough. about... If you're talking about the Cheese and Pinky duo, mm-hmm. it was fun, but it was basically just, oh, hey, Pinky, hey, Cheese. Oh, they're strangelings. Let's shoot them with rubber chickens. Okay. Oh, there's toys. Toys for sale. Uh, I mean, th- th- that's how it felt. <laughs> but, back th- but back then, the Pinky Cheese ship was fandom only. This is how we get to the new norm. That is also true. So, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, the reason why I brought it up now is just because, well, Pinky and Cheese, and also I just realized we didn't review it at the time. And now wow. I remember why. Well, it was it was mostly for the toy advertisement. Mm-hmm. Though that's probably for the best, as kids did not come out well in that comic. Yeah, and... Norman, do you um, remember what I said last time? Uh, remind About me? Cadence. Basically, while her while the Crystal Empire is under assault from the Changelings, uh, she's making Shining Armor sit inside and wait because she doesn't want her husband to get replaced by a Changeling. <laughs> true. You know what I but, said? This is Mare's work. <laughs> no, she doesn't do anything. I mean, she's perfectly content to just sit there. Uh, should we do something? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's her answer. No. Yeah. And that's the thing that bothered me. Uh, Shining Armor got a toy, so of course he went on an adventure. Yep. But Cadence, oh did, Cadence did not, so yeah. she was basically the sit at home and wait for someone to come solve the problem for her princess. Yeah. But, oh man, like, just, just to bring it up, because, so just so you know, I was pissed off at that ending just for the sole reason of how dumb the conclusion was shiny 
Shining Armor ran all the way from the Crystal Empire to Ponyville. Ran, by the way. While the Wonder Balls had to jerry-rig a experimental death rocket. Product placements. Mm. Product placements. Although, personally, I, I figure he just stole one of their rockets. <laughs> it's the only way he could get away from his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway getting back on track um whew, oh uh sorry Jacob, what do you think relationship and stuff with uh cheese and cheese, this one uh, i'm uh pretty much agreeing with silver although i think it's been happening a bit earlier considering the moment they met and she fixed that kink in his back there's that uh a short panel of uh awkward silence and th- and then they go on. <laughs> yeah, that that one was great. Like you you can clearly tell that both of them are into each other. Uh, Tony did great. Uh, who else? Um, Tom did great on just expressing how things are. Like they say so little, but they say a lot. Yeah, although I do have, uh, I do wonder uh, some some a bit, a bit like down down the line. This. Uh, G Sandwich uh, uh, <laughs> asks uh, if she's if think has been down here before and she said Stars, uh, Stars World used it to uh, use the Karens for some projects down there. And I'm trying to remember when was that because I can't seem to remember. Or is it just another offhand? Hmm. Silver, you got anything on this? Because I can't think of anything. Well, see, there was the Reflections arc early, early in the in the comics run that said Star Swirl had a a secret study down under Canterlot. Yeah. But wasn't that uh, inside the castle? Below the castle, I believe. In, in, hidden deep with a Hydra to keep watch. But the Hydra died because... <laughs> Time. Because the... Yeah, I think it went without food for a while and a like, wow, Star Swirl, the SPCA is going to have a field day with you. For... They cannot prove anything. Hydras are not real. <laughs> oh, I see. We're using the mythical claws. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, uh, then there's a unicorn flying around. <laughs> uh, but anywho, <clears throat> I'm carrying on. We see... Discord saying how bored he is and stuff. Or, yeah, uh, before that, uh, he just likes, uh, sorry, we see Fatashai looking at the window, um, looking at how Rainbow Dash is flying and uh, commenting that uh, how they're flying are so much fun. And Discord just says, wait, couldn't you fly too? I mean, you can fly. Fatashai says not like that. And she senses something wrong with Discord. And he, he just says, ah, everything right now is just so boring. Like, being good is boring. And Fluttershy says, we can make the sign for the petting zoo. And Discord just says, I could just magic up a sign that um, uh, dance and uh, spin around acrobatically and stuff. And Fluttershy does the stare and they do arts and crafts. Yay. So, continuing it back to our heroes, they get out of the cave, and they, what you call this, um, flirt around even more, and suddenly, Pinky has a crisis of self, because her mirror image says she should go for it and ask Cheese to go out on a date with him and whatnot. But she ain't confident and thinks that, oh, maybe this is a bad idea, maybe if they do go on a date like the friendship with blah 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 and so on like basically she's afraid of rejection so building up her strength and building up her bravery she just goes for the kill and tries to ask Chi something while trying to say something things get a bit quiet and oh no um, what happened all the sound all the text box is gone even the to be continued sign. Oh no, what's going on? The horror. And coming ends. 
Well, it definitely is a horror if you just entered the world of the silent man. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's horrible. Oh, no. Uh, you, so... you remember what it is. The silent man. Oh, no, not sure. What Silver. was it? Silver, you got any idea? Well, uh, I wasn't sure if it was Silent Hill. I don't know about Silent Man. I figured uh, letter, letterist Neil Utake just went on strike. <laughs> yeah, the Silent Man is uh, really that really bad video game when you play as some uh, really edgy death <gasps> oh, protagonist. Oh, that one! The, yeah. the PS4 game that kind of had potential, but not really. Oh, it's a, God. Yeah, repetitive combat, uh, and it's really pretentious in its execution of the story. I'm afraid I missed that one. Or maybe maybe I shouldn't be afraid. <laughs> it was something. If I recall, uh, they had to put in a patch for uh, once you play through the first time that you, that you actually get subtitles in the if you try to play it again. To be artistically edgy. Alrighty then. So, anywho... Um... Let's head to the next issue. So, uh, in issue 95, episode 7, uh, Pinkie Pie and Cheese race to find a solution to the uh, Mufelta Moss and return sound to Canterlot before the festival of the two sisters is ruined. Yes. So, we start off the comic with, well, our heroes. Uh, having a meeting and trying to solve the problem. Uh, it seems that Twilight discovers the problem and it is a moss. The Mufelta... The, Muf, Muf, the Mufelta... Muflata, yes, the Muflata moss. Uh, a magical moss that adopts sound. In small quantities, it keeps things quiet. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. But... Uh, with sunlight, water, it multiplies and it is not good because it can absorb all the sound and be very, very bad because we need sound in our life. So, try to ask the question, how do we stop it? Rainbow Dash says, idea, blah. And everybody's just confused with what she means and she just do it. Um, she flies off and does a sonic rain boom. Good plan! But she's defeated because there's no sound coming out, only light. Which is kind of sucks. <clears throat> but they can't feel defeated for long because when they took when they take a look see at Cantalot, the whole place is in utter chaos. So what they do is devise a plan. Well, um, for the main five, they go out helping whoever they can and Twilight do more research on the plants. So before I head into this really quick montage of life saving, um, what do you guys think? And I'm going to twist it around. Jacob, what do you think? Well, I think... Uh... It's a good start, but I do have to make a slight uh, complaint for putting words to describe uh, what characters are thinking because I think that was really superfluous when you could just... I don't know. Like, when I see confusion, you could just put uh, question marks over everybody's heads. And we already seen uh, that uh, Rainbow Dash has an idea. I, I don't know, it just feels really too, really too much. Oh, all right. Silva? I, I agree. We can. The art is very expressive, so we know what they're thinking just by their postures. We don't need it spelled out. But maybe this is Yuli Yutaka saying, wait, I'm not on strike anymore. Please, give me a paycheck. <laughs> oh, no. All right, then. So now, well, but before we go too much further, I was curious about the name of the Mufleta Moss, and a quick Google search. There's a Mufuleta sandwich. Oh. 
Son of a bitch. Uh, a pan. New Orleans sandwich filled with olive salad, cheese, ham, salami, mortadella, and capicola. Mm -hmm. Similar to an Italian sub. It's basically stuffed to the brim. And I thought, well, that sounds delicious, but I don't know why they've gone with uh, the moss. Maybe it's Latin for uh, muffle, like to be quiet or something like that, or to uh, neutralize sound. Or it's more just to do that. It's, it's just to work play on muffle. Mm, yeah, muffle that too. sound like those. Actually, I don't know. actually, now that I remember, uh, for the, uh, two days ago, I tried to buy one of those muffles for the microphone, so it does, it drowns out the the background sound and all that. But I mm. couldn't oh, find any. A windscreen, yeah. Mm, yes. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering if Tom Zaylor was having lunch when he thought of this. <laughs> you know, that would be fun. That would be fun. I mean, the moss does look like it's really unique. It's not one in one shape or anything. But it is cheese's response. Cheese is feeling responsible as we did see the moss on his hoof in the last issue. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to. Well, I didn't really forgot, but the colorist forgot that it was on his hoof when he came out of the what you call this uh, sinkhole. But the colorist, oh man, I really hate to brag on her, brag on her um, header. Uh, she forgot that. Oh. Um, to color it green. But it's not a mistake. Or it may have been intentional to show it subtly entering the situation. Eh, possibly. But any anything more to add before I carry on with the life saving? <clears throat> carry on my wayward son. Alrighty then. So anywho, we see the main five helpings. Helping ponies. Um, there's a pony who fell from a ladder and Rainbow Dash catches her and I feel like they are going to hook up later on. Yes. Yes, that that, that is a look. At least from Rainbow Dash, like, how you doing? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, calm me down, Joey. Uh, we see... Uh, Fluttershy communicating with the animals, which is kind of fascinating. Even though she can't talk, she can communicate with them, uh, and she's help. Uh, and she's asking the animals to kind of be a lookout for uh, the other five. So we see it in action where a baby is crying, but the mother couldn't hear her, and the cat tugs on Rarity to get her attention, to show that, oh, look, your baby's crying, and so on. And uh, we see Twilight, sorry, no, um, Applejack uh, lassoing a runaway carriage and helping some kids before they get hit, and so on. Uh, one of the few things I've noticed, and I'm just wondering why the people of Cantalot don't deal with, is their, what you call this? The moss, the moss inside the house. Like, why aren't you dealing with it? They don't notice it. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anyway. Uh, uh, Cheese and Pinky have put up a sign explaining what's going on. And they say that, okay guys, look at this. Um, this moss thing is the cause for the all quietness. So, uh, we need you to pay attention and try to do something for it. And we see a punk pony in the background picking up a moss, looking at it confusingly, uh, while Cheese is wallowing away, feeling like this is his fault. Um, Pinky feels sad. <laughs> wow, well, it's true what you guys said. The uh, letters is a bit redundant, but Probably it's just to keep attention, the breeder's attention. So anyway, we, we see Cheese wallowing in misery while Pinky is trying to cheer him up. And they somehow connect <laughs> and they play around and have fun. And their laughter echoes through the hall or the alley. And they're confused for a second, saying, wait, what? 
that that's not right. So they try to simulate a laugh, but it didn't work. And they think hard, <laughs> hard thinking with the gears and whatnot. Uh, and Cheese got an idea, and he do a what you might call this pratfall. Not really. Um, so he just bumps into a wall, and Pinky laughs. Uh, while laughing honestly, he sees that all the plants are dying. And they have an intense stare to each other, having a good idea. And they put up a stage on in the middle of Cantalot, I think. Or middle of the market district, whatever it is. And they play practical jokes. And with that, the laughter... So, uh, the, the laughter spreads and everybody crowds the stage. And with that, they laugh and laugh and laugh. And with that, they save Cantalot. Yay! Twilight looking at this, feeling happy or proud or glad, I got no idea, uh, thinks of science and the reason of why this happens. Honestly, I got no idea and got no idea. So... Princess Twilight wrote out a letter decreeing that left uh, the toss the moss, and the way to do it is uh, laughter is the best medicine. Uh, I, I got no idea how to explain this because the signboard itself doesn't really explain much. So uh, it, it tells you what you need to know. I command you to what, what? attend, please. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate I appreciate Twilight's manners and all this. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, um, I guess so. I'm gonna stop here for a bit. Silver, what do you think? Well, I, I guess here's the question: If ponies don't attend, does Twilight send out like Flash Sentry? I command thee to round up all my citizens and bring them for laughter. Uh, Princess, are you okay? No, go get them. <laughs> Isn't he out of her jurisdiction? Canterlot is her jurisdiction. Yes, but I am Equestria <laughs> and the Senate. <clears throat> now, the big thing going through all this is the background ponies, which is always kind of fun. It's, you know, a game of spot the background pony. And let's see here. There's the purple, there's the punk pony with the purple and star eye patch. Some have wondered if that's an OC called Nimbus Dash, though I know very little about her. Mm -hmm. Then in the featured in previous comics by uh, Tony Cusisto is a blue-haired gray pegasus called Sky Shatter, who I believe is his uh, creation as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yes, he was featured in the in when Tony went by pencils. Uh, what was the comic called? Pinky Anon's Pie Adventure. Oh yeah, that one, yeah. Which is um it's a bit spicy. I, I wouldn't recommend it for younger audience. No. And then I was so curious in the initial crowd uh watching them laugh, watching Pinky and Cheese and having a good old ha 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 ho ha ha. There's this pure black pony with white markings and a and a white mane and purple eyes. And for the life of me, there were too many candidates for whom this could be, including common rider villains. <laughs> so at the time, I had no idea who this was. Apparently, it's a OC of a member of the community called S. Leech. Mm -hmm. Sleech. All right. And I guess a friend of Tony's is there featuring the OC. It's backgrounds, you know. I mean. Uh, I, I, I mm, honestly, I got no idea how to feel about this. It's adding ponies to the background, making them more what you will call this visible and whatnot. But it, hmm, for me personally, it feels like it doesn't really hurt that much because it's just background. They don't have a say in the word. Because if you take a look at another panel, you see there's a unicorn that has a goatee, not really goatee, a five o'clock shadow, whatever it is, and it's wearing, uh, wearing a black shirt. So, yeah, I mean, he stands out, but just that. 
Well, I find it's usually just trying to add some vitality to the world. Basically, that you see all the, one of the things the bronies just love to do is take a background character and give them a history of personality. I mean, all you had to see was uh, Lyra Heartstrings sitting <laughs> a little weird, and suddenly you have this whole anthropology uh, fixation with her. Now, I gotta, I've always been sad that that's tapered off as the series went on. True. No, we, we, don't, we don't have that so much, but I like seeing the diversity in the crowd. That's true. I mean, uh, with what, Lyra and anthropology and whatnot, it feels like they were just doing those kind of silly things just to see if people notice and whatnot. And as time goes on, um, maybe corporate rein it in a bit so it doesn't really affect the brand and so on. I don't know, it feels that way, but those are the kind of things that made the fandom like made the fandom kind of talk, kind of do stuff and made the show more special. Like, take a look, see uh, uh, another pony. Like, you're talking about a, a black pony with white with a white mask. Um, the pony in front of Coco Pamel uh, that has a mustache. Some people that might say that it's another brony in the fandom. Who was it? You remember the guy? I forgot. God dang it. That has that mustache thing. Man, it's so long. A goatee? Lots of folks have a goatee. Yeah, um, it's been a while, so I, I don't really remember the name. But yeah, Anthony huh. C? Oh, uh... <clears throat> no, Anthony doesn't have a goatee. But the best, I mean, I don't know. I mean, see, it's one of those things where, oh, yes, you could say all those kind of things, blah, 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 blah. And a brown pony that has the same color scheme as me, he looks like, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Mudbriar, but not really. Man, that oh, can't he actually looks happy. Yeah, he's dead. Those room. That could have been me with the right hairstyle. <laughs> God dang it. But still, um... Where am I? Um, anything else to add, Silva? No, just that it was fun to see all these background characters. I think we're at the point where Discord uh, makes his reappearance. Mm, true. Uh, before that, uh, Jacob, what do you think? I'm just looking at the earlier uh, panels and I'm wondering, did Pinky just grow a few inches to be on the same eye level as Cheese Sandwich because she looks taller? Mm, weren't they both at the same height? No, no she's is like bigger. Yeah, he's taller. Oh. Though, uh, well, like I say, in this relationship, there's always a rise. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, 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 I got nothing over that one. No. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so any, anything else, Jacob? No? Uh, no. All right. Uh, I'm going to carry on then. So, anywho, um, the, a few hours later, the moss are all dead, and Twilight has this long speech about blah, 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 blah. And Discord appears. Yay. So, Discord appears, and Fluttershy says, where were you when uh, the Mofeleta silence... Everything, you disappear, we could have used your help. <laughs> Discord just says, you said doing things for yourself is important, so I let you do it for yourself. <laughs> Besides, it was funnier. <sighs> Unlike this part of the speech that is all padding, which is true. Well, I'm just glad that this is one occasion in which Discord wasn't responsible. Unlike some parts... <laughs> That I'm not going to name. Yes, yes. So, anywho, uh, we see Cheese and Pinky walking in a back alley. I think it's a back alley or just an alley. They're just walking in an alley. And Cheese says uh, he feels bad that he's responsible for uh, bringing the moss topside. And Pinky just says it was an accident. And 
Pinky kind of explains her emotions, why she's been feeling a little weird, weird, but not normal weird. And she noticed it and says the same thing too, because he's feeling weird, weird, not weird, weird, weird. <laughs> Man, this idiot. Uh, and they talk and talk and suddenly it click. They understand and they don't say much and they um, have a good time with planning and whatnot. And they walk into the sunset. The end. And with that, comic ends. So, Silver, what do you, uh, final thoughts and what do you think? Well, Pinky and Cheese don't know it, but they're walking down Cry Valley. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Where are the pearls? <laughs> well, that's just it. They'll, one day they'll walk down that way with little cheese and suddenly a crime happens and bereft of parents, cheese will become mysterious man the well. Bat cheese. Oh god. Na, 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 Bat cheese. Uh, but before that he needs to play a vampire. Play a vampire? Yeah. A uh, shiny sparkly vampire that no, lights. No, hit. no, no, no. Just don't don't don't. No Roman, I I'm sorry, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> To be honest, um, his role as Batman was not bad. The fact that you even throw it in his face, that you would treat someone with that torture. <laughs> Norman, I didn't know you'd be so unforgiving. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am evil. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll workshop that laugh. <laughs> what? You don't like my la my evil laugh? <laughs> Well, let's just say Mandark did it manlier. <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, of course. But anywho, anything else? Will? Well, just that this was a, a fun comic. Uh, some visual oddities, but I I enjoy seeing Pinky and Cheese. And basically, oh yeah, I originally I compared this to the genre of Sakai K, mm -hmm. where the larger conflict is merely a backdrop to the interpersonal relationship of the main characters. It's a big thing in anime. Ah. Usually. I see. So, there's that. Uh, but by and large, I, I found it was a fun introduction to Pinky and Cheese relationship, but now that the Season 10 comics have run their course, I think to myself, well, they never really committed. Not even a kiss. Or nuzzle? It's I mean, it's too adult for them. They're not married yet. But you can't nuzzle until you're married. I mean, jeez. Yes, take a look. See, shining and armor, shining armor, and Princess Cadence waited till they married, then they kiss. You sure? I mean, uh, seeing as how they didn't exist before, then that's how they do it. That's how it is. <laughs> I feel dumb for saying that. <laughs> oh god. Yep. I feel 10% dumb. Whew. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh man. I mean, okay, okay, okay. Honestly speaking, celibacy is a thing. Um, wait for marriage and so on. Th that is a thing. Uh, that's up to you how you want to do it, but. I don't know. Uh, what you say, Silver, is true. At least let them hold hooves or something or nuzzle or stuff. Well, I'll tell you true. Once upon a time, I was at a I was at a wedding to two friends out of college. Uh, only like a year out of, after they graduated. Oh wow, that's fast. And they. Apparently, they made it a point to say that their wedding kiss was their first kiss. Oh. And I, and I was like, wait, they've had a whole relationship, they're committed to marriage, and they've never even kissed? Mm -hmm. What? I mean, you know, to each their own? I, I'm unfortunately, I haven't gotten to talk to them in a very long time. I 
don't know how they're doing, but well, yeah, I guess it is a thing. Some folks do marry, do fall in love without even the need of a kiss. I well, mean, I mean, I mean, the... I mean... go ahead. Yeah. Well, well, I was going to say the ripest fruit is the tastiest. That is true. That is true. And this is one of those things where I got no idea what to say because it's one of those things where it's to each their own. And if they feel that way and it works for them and if they're together and happy and both of them can agree and be faithful to each other, then more power to them. But... Yes. Eh. But, uh, but, uh... I don't know if that applies to Pinky and Cheese. I mean, they are ponies who go in full... They commit wholeheartedly to things. I'd have never known them to do things in half measures. True, but if it's a game that they try to play, then, oh, goodness me, uh, the teasing will be so hard that everybody's just going to go haywire. And when the moment comes, it will be awesome. Honestly, picturing very intense games to spin the bottle... <laughs> Uh, forget the bottle. <laughs> uh, boys. <laughs> anyway, Jacob, what do you think? Final thoughts and um, uh, fi final thoughts and. <laughs> yeah, well, all things considered, my negative opinion on uh, season ten. This is uh, this is the the good part of the whole thing, and it's not like we're gonna see cheese sandwich. Uh, we're going to see them later down the line again, but as far as uh, things are concerned, I'm okay with this, especially considering it's Tom Zellner writing it. Mm, Alright, and you've told me that you're a bit negative on the Season 10 comics. Uh, you, you had your issues, and Siddler, what do you think? Like, um, Do you feel the same way, or are you neutral, or are you positive? I'm in a weird state. I appreciate that what they tried to do was expand the world even further and just to say, okay, Equestria is not the sole source of friendship. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, the great, the great enlightenment going out into the world. It's showing the world has a lot to show, teach us, but it followed the beats of Equestria a bit too closely. Uh, multiple times, yes. Uh, I think the biggest contender is Zakura's arc, and we learn about her home, and it's really Equestria with a, a different visual painted over. Yeah, and I'm the biggest critic of that arc the most, because Zakura's my favorite character in the series, and I was repulsed with, with how poorly she was treated in the series altogether. Even in the comic series, there's really no... Um, no advancement uh, for her or anything, except in the one instance when Tend Anderson wrote the Zakora and Spike f uh, Friends Forever issue. That was the only time that she got uh, any ca character development at, at all, or I mean characterization, other than being uh, the voodoo lady. Uh, yes, the voodoo lady. And I really like that issue, but... What Jeremy Whitley decided to do is just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't know how to exp how to explain my anger without <laughs> tearing my hair out right now. Yeah. That's how bad it was because, mm. it, and, and, honestly, I don't know if I should be even talking right now. We should rather save it for next time when we continue the season ten overarching story. True, true. And we can save it for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, you're, you're clearly in the negative, and Silver, you're in between? In between. There are things I enjoy, and there are things I'm not so big of a fan. Mm, all right, because... In this case, sorry, for this comic, I am a fan. Mm. Because I, I, I'm in this very awkward position where I'm reading the comic as we are about to record, so I don't really have those kind of positive or negative feelings like for me when i first read the zakura arc it was fun it was exciting and then after or when reviewing i noticed a lot of things like you mentioned that it's the same beat as how season one was oh, okay um for this one 
it's awesome. I like it. And you guys seem to be in the same boat too. Uh, and I got no idea what's going to happen the next issue and so on. So um, I'm in a position where I'm going through it and I'm enjoying the whole ride. Well, there you go. We'll, we'll be curious to hear what you think uh, once we get into even more out for the, even further beyond Equestria. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait because um, there's a few characters I want to see and those are going to be fun. Uh, so anywho, um, my thoughts on this comic, I love it. The character interaction is fun. I like how they risk not putting words in the comic at the end of episode or chapter 94 and yeah it, it was really great it was really great besides that there's nothing else i can say <laughs> so anywho let's wrap things up so if you guys have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at ibishujime.com you can also reach us on the twitter the shows to take on is at me a show and my personal to take on is at roman sanzo silver where can the good people find you Oh, you can find me on uh, the Twitter, the Deviant Heart, and the YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. If you do a search for After the Fact Pony, you'll find me. If you do a search for Just After the Fact, you may find a news program, which is informative, but not pony-based. So it has, so it has one inherent flaw. All right, all right. So that's MLP After the After the Facts or Silver Quill After the Facts. Yes. <laughs> okay, both then. Alrighty then. And Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on Deviant, uh, Deviant Art page, uh, Yaka Von Tolker. On Twitter, you can find me under Tales of the Ashes. And if you're interested in uh, film fiction, you, you can find me under the nickname JFT. Alrighty then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrimitiveLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Mr. Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Rock button. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs>So what's the special outro for this one? Do we stay quiet or do we just make more moss puns and anything like that? Oh no, I feel you. I must we sing. Can you feel the cheesy pie tonight? Oh no, cream no. cheese. Mm, that's what happens in the After Dark story. <laughs> no, no, no. As if the cheese. No, what was it? The cream pie. Joke wasn't enough. Oh, the, the oh yes, the creamy, revolution. creamy frosting. <sighs> Three, two, <laughs> one. Yay!